here we go. This is a beautiful way to start the day. This is a sausage, egg, cheese, casserole. It also has some chilies up in this little guy. And it's topped with some beautiful green onions that have been thin sliced and a bit of avocado. This is a wonderful brunch. This is a good breakfast also. A great way to start the day. Try this casserole out. You're going to get a heck of a surprise. Look at that thing. Oh man, that's just scrumptious. Hello. Welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. On this episode of Texas Cooking Today, we're going to make a yummy breakfast casserole. This is a wonderful, easy-to-do dish that can be made the day in advance. If you like have a special occasion or a holiday and you don't want to have to cook on it, you can fix this dish up and it makes a perfect breakfast or brunch item. Very simple to make. Come a little closer. Let me show you what we're going to use to make this extremely tasty dish. Let's start with our meat. Over here I have one pound of sausage. Now you have a couple of choices. You can either just take the casing off of whatever your favorite sausage is, or you can buy the kind of sausage that doesn't have a casing that just comes in a chub. And that's what I've done here. This is one pound of sausage, and you can get that as a spicy sausage, or the hot, or the mild, whichever suits your fancy. Just go for whatever you like. Other items that we're going to put in this very simple casserole, on the bottom it's going to have a bread base, and that's what I have here, some uh, loaves that I made uh, a few days ago. These would be really good, this is a cheese bread. Uh, you can just use plain white bread if you'd like, but be creative with it if you get a chance. Back here we have our eggs, six eggs, two cups of milk, I have eight ounces of grated cheddar cheese. On the bread, you'll either need six slices of regular white bread or wheat bread or just, you know, approximate that same amount in something else. I have a couple of items here for toppings, some uh, avocado and some green onion. These will not be baked in, but they will actually be put on afterwards. I have some poblanos. Chilies in this dish really radiate. They just bring out a wonderful flavor. So if you can, get some of these wonderful tasting chilies and you're going to make this dish taste that much better. As far as spices, we keep it simple on this one. Some ground dry mustard. We're going to use a teaspoon of this and a teaspoon of salt and that'll be beat into our custard that we make with the eggs and milk. Alright, let's get on with this dish. The first thing we're going to have to do, or things, will be browning that sausage right over here and on these poblanos we've got to cook the skin off of them and give them a quick wash before we dice them up so that we can assemble this tasty little casserole. And don't forget to have something to enjoy while you do your cooking. Cooking should be fun and relaxing. First thing I want to do is take this sausage and transfer it to a skillet. There we go. Now I can take that and cook it up and I want it crumbled sort of like uh, ground beef would be. We've now placed our meat over some heat and you're going to want about a medium to medium high heat to start this on. Now while that is coming up in temperature and it's going to cook off nicely and brown for us, over here I need to turn two burners on. There we go. And I'm going to take those pretty little chilies that we have and put them right down over the heat. We'll cook, cook these off one at a time. What this will do is blister the skin and scorch it slightly, and that way it washes off very easily. These are done well enough now. Pull them off of our heat, give them a wash, and they can then be diced. So now it's just a matter of finishing up this sausage. Let's take another look at our sausage here. I believe it has just now come to the point where it has no more pink in it. It isn't actually turning brown or anything like that. If you notice in the bottom of the pan, it's not like I have a lot of fat to turn to one side. If I did, I would spoon it out of there. So it looks like I have a good product here for my casserole. I want to turn the heat off and just let it set. It needs to set and cool so I can handle it in a little bit. Now let's move on to cleaning up those poblanos. Now it's time that we get that skin cleaned up off of that poblano. And what I'm going to do here is using cold water, I'm going to give these just a simple wash to wash the skin off of them. Let's 
how easily that comes off. Just give it a light rub. We have it. That's one cleaned up full blown right there. Now, let me show you a trick. When you want to open one of these up, you can push your finger right into the side, just like this, and pull down. And it opens that thing right up. Underneath there, there's a seed pod. If you were going to use this for a rieno, you would simply just pinch that seed pod and bam, you've taken care of it. But in this case, we're just going to go ahead and remove the entire crown, like so. Decrowned it. I'm going to wash the seeds out, and now it's ready to be sliced. That's all there is to that. Very, very simple. Do each one of these exactly the okay, same way. Okay, let's get busy. Slicing up these wonderful chilies. All I want to have is just some nice small dice. So I'm going to start by halving that. That way it'll lay a little more flat. And I want to cut these into long, thin strips. Now remember, when cutting, keep the fingers curved under with this part of the knuckle straight up and down for the knife to glide on and the thumb tucked behind the fingers like this. It's like a little crab, okay? There we go. Nice dice, and these are about a half inch square, roughly. Now, could you use cans of green chilies? Yeah, I guess you could, but it's not going to have that wonderful, fresh flavor that these do. Now, it is time for us to go ahead and cut up our bread into cubes to work on this dish. If you will have noticed, I have now on my third color of cutting board. We're about to cut bread, and bread, all bakery and dairy goes on the whiteboard. Okay, don't forget this color-coded system. The red meat, such as pork, beef, lamb, veal, venison, whatever is good red meat, goes on that red board. All poultry on the yellow, all seafood on the blue, and all cooked meats on the brown. Okay, now that is to prevent cross-contamination in your kitchen. It's going to help keep you safe. Cutting board safety is every bit as important as knife safety. Now I'm going to cut nice little half inch wide strips on this bread. That last one, since it's headed downhill, you notice I turn it around. That way, I'm, if the knife slips, it slips away from me. Okay, now that I've done that, I want to take my knife and angle it a little bit. So I get nice uniform slices doing that half inch wide slice thing again. What I'm going to do, as I slice these up, push this one to the side first, I'm going to do one more, and I'm going to line the bottom of my casserole dish with this cubed bread. And this adds both a lot of flavor as well as a very unique texture to the custard. Okay, let's get on with our batter. Did I call it earlier? That's incorrect. This is custard, all right? We're going to get on with our custard. Now I need six eggs. Let's crack those each into a separate bowl and then check them. Oops, I got a little bit of shell right there. That's a good reason to do it this way. That way you don't have to go fishing out shells. Now, give it a bit of a sniff. It smells good. It can go into our product. This is just a good way to make sure that you don't trash a whole bunch of ingredients all at once. It's good, smells good, move on. Clear. Good smell. This one's a little more hazy, but it should smell not bad. Clear. Good smell. Goes in. All right. Hand. 
Now, I'm going to want, I'm going to want a beat piece. So take your whisk. If you don't have a whisk, you could use a fork or any other means of beating that you have. From side to side, don't go in a circle. in the milk. Now we need to season this also. And I'm going to want about a teaspoon of salt. There's getting close. There we go. And I'm going to want about a teaspoon of this mustard, dry ground mustard. Mustard works really well in eggs and in cheese dishes. And since this has both, it's a wonderful compliment. There we go. Our batter, excuse me, our <laughs> custard is now ready for a pour. There we go. Sorry, I was busy in the background. Let's move right on. Well, I believe it is time for us to go ahead and line out this dish with all of our ingredients. Now, we've already got our bread in here, so the next thing I want to put in there is going to be the sausage. It's had time to cool now as we did the other thing. I'll take this and just gently sprinkle it down inside of this dish, getting that coating as even as possible. There we go. Get the spread on that nice and even. Looks pretty good. There's a few light spots, but not, nothing bad. The next item, let's put our chilies on there. Our cheese is next. Do a liberal coating. And now, for the finale. We just need to put our batter. I keep saying that, don't I? Put that custard over the top. I guess my brain isn't working today. He keeps thinking batter. And it needs to be thinking custard. Okay, that's very Okay, simple. we are now ready to put our casserole into this oven. That's 350 degrees. Center, center top rack. And we're gonna give it about 35 to 45 minutes, depending on altitude, low altitude a little shorter time than higher. I have just now pulled this casserole from the oven. As you notice from the bubbling edge, it is still quite hot. This has domed up quite a bit and it's going to fall a little bit as it cools. So just let it cool. I do like to cook mine until I get just a little bit of brown spotting on top of the cheese as well as good brown corners. And I must admit those corners are my favorite part. So anyway, we're gonna dish this up in just a little bit, but we need to fix a little bit of garnish and other items to go on the dish with it to make it just that much better. So let's turn around to our cutting board and get on with okay. it. Okay, now let's get on with cutting up our garnish and the side vegetable. I want to start with this, your avocado. Now if you have a uh, stem on that, just take that and you can pull it sideways and use it to come right off. There we go. Looks light colored inside. That's usually a good sign. Now I'm just going to cut this in half with my knife. There's a large pit in the middle, so push your knife into it, rotate it down slightly, come over the top and around, and then just twist. There we go. To remove the pit from the other side, gently drive your knife right into it, give it a bit of a twist, and there you have it. Comes right out. Now, usually, I will show you how to slice this inside and then use a spoon to pull it out. And what I wanted to do on this one was to show you a little bit different technique. What I wanted to do first is to peel off, or cut off rather, that uh, area where the skin was. And I'm going to peel back the skin. You can use a knife for your fingers. And notice this. So I just pull that back. This works just fine. This makes for a good safe way to slice this also, which is what I'm going to do. There we go. 
get rid of that skin. And if you notice, there's nothing left on that skin. We've cleaned it perfectly. Everything that's edible, right there. Now back to the large knife. I'm just gonna make some simple slices. Yes. I'm making these fairly thick. These are about a quarter inch thick. But now I have a lovely avocado that I can take and gently fan over the food. Okay? Now, the next item that I'm going to be using will be these onions. I just need to remove that root end first. To get rid of that. There we go. And gently I'm going to make some slices. And if you notice, the nose of my knife stays in contact with the board with my fingers curved under, my thumb behind the fingers, and I just come back and make a forward and backward motion as I push down. Very simple slicing technique. Now I do want some of the green part of this onion in addition to the white that I've been cut. Because it adds color to that dish and it's going to be really nice. Go. Just that. Put it all together. Well, I wish I could transfer this to a bowl to serve out of, which makes it quite handy. Get one of those. It'll be a little easier to handle now. Now, all I have to do is cut up my casserole and assemble my plate. Okay, let's go ahead and get busy slicing this up. Take a nice sharp knife. Well, if you notice the motion that I use, I come up and then down and forward. And this helps to give a nice even line where the materials are pulled up as much like it is here. Now, as I mentioned before, I have an affinity for that corner piece. I think it is just tasty as can be. I'm going to pull that out first. I missed part of that edge. There we go. Now, what I'm going to be doing is to jazz this up just a little bit. Just a bit more. So, bring it up. Place it right up all like So, beautiful. A little bit of the onion with the top. And there we have it. We're ready to go with a beautiful breakfast casserole. Well, that wasn't very hard, was it? Very simple, very easy to do. Loaded with flavor. It's a good use of some older ingredients as well as fresh. And you get this beautiful, this, this beautiful product right here. I get to try it. You get to also. You just gotta get busy baking it. Year old flavor. I've been baking this since I was a boy. And all those fresh green onions, they just lend to it. It really sets everything off with this fresh side. And then the flavors inside that are blended and married. The firm, I mean, really firm custard because of that bread. Delicious dish. Well, I'm going to be making a uh, bit of a pig of myself in a bit. I tell you what, thank you. Thank you very much for watching Texas Cooking Today. Please subscribe to Texas Cooking Today. And you have a good day. Thank you for watching Texas Cooking Today. The show where you can get great recipes and the best techniques are taught. Please subscribe to Texas Cooking Today where you will always find something hot and ready to eat.